Hello everyone, my name is Shokhrokh Bek Rasulu. I'm a lecturer from Marketing Management in Tashkent Institute of Finance. Today, we are going to talk about product branding. Let's get introduced with the lecture overview. During the lecture, we are going to briefly define the brand knowledge, get introduced with major brand strategy decisions, uh, and watch a video case study, and we'll have a small task dedicated to the topic and the video case study. So let's talk about the, one of the most important decision uh, making stage called branding. Brand is the name, sign, design or a combination of these that identifies the maker or seller of a product or service. Brands are more than just names and symbols that embody everything that the product or service means to consumers. Some analysts see brands as the major enduring assets of the company. Brand equity is the positive differential effect that knowing the brand has on customer responses to the product or service. A brand with a strong brand equity is a very valuable asset. Brand value is the total financial value of a brand. So that's why uh, we pay a lot of resources to the brands when it comes to the branding. Brand knowledge is the measure of a brand equity and defined in terms of two components, brand awareness and brand association or image. So this picture illustrates the brand knowledge and how it is developed. So brand knowledge is developed through brand awareness and brand image. Brand awareness and its turn is dwelt by uh, creating brand recall and recognition uh, in the minds of customers. Brand recall relates to a customer's ability to retrieve the brand when given the product category or other relevant clues. Uh, the example for this is when you are going to ch uh, for shopping and in your list your mom has written uh, pasta and when you read pasta you uh, start to think about uh, one exact brand of pasta, for example, Rolton or Makfa, Makis, and etc. So this is brand recall. Recognition. So consumers' ability to confirm prior exposure the brand when uh, given the brand as a clue. Correct discrimination of the brand as seen, heard previously. Brand image uh, uh, is developed through types of brand association. So, I uh, guess customers associate your brand uh, to some attributes or benefits, attitudes they gain through the uh, consumption uh, of your product. For example, when they buy um, expensive product, they associate it with maybe the uh, premium product category or with the uh, glamorous product category, whether, I don't know, maybe the uh, expensive uh, category of your product and favorability strength and uniqueness of brand associations so here are some brand value examples expressed in dollars uh, this is what you gain through increasing your brand equity yeah another major uh, decision making process uh, brand strategy decision making process uh, first, brand positioning, brand name selection, brand name sponsorship, and brand development. Brand uh, positioning uh, requires marketers to uh, make a decision over what kind of attributes or benefits and beliefs and values should a product have. Step 2. Brand name selection. So, uh, here are some uh, suggestions uh, for uh, selecting a good brand name. So, first, suggest benefits and qualities. Second, easy to pronounce. It should be easy to pronounce, uh, recognizable and uh, easy to remember. Third, distinctive. Four, extendable, because uh, you don't know uh, whether in the future uh, you are going to extend this brand uh, with a new product categories, so it should be extendable. Fifth, 
translatable for the global economy, which is very important in nowadays uh, globalization. Uh, six, capable of registration and legal protection. Uh, the most uh, triggering and the most uh, issue causing uh, point in these uh, uh, suggestions is trans translatable for the global economy. Mostly, uh, even in our local markets, we can meet some uh, international brands or even our uh, own national products that uh, have international brand names that are hard to pronounce or that are hard to translate, that uh, we don't even know the translation of. So here are some examples from the uh, foreign markets, uh, uh, some bad, uh, bad examples for brand names. So probably these uh, brand names mean something in their own local language, but not in the global language. If you are going to export your uh, products, please make sure that uh, you are choosing the right brand name. And some uh, examples from our national market, yeah? So what do you think? How do you spell those uh, brand names uh, that are taken from uh, international language? So this is how uh, Les I Les uh, is pronounced uh, in French. Les Ailes. Les Ailes. And uh, Lassetti, as we pronounce uh, it in a daily use, is pronounced in Italian. Lassetti. Yeah. So let's continue. Measure brand strategy decisions. Step three: brand sponsorship. So. Uh, we have four uh, brand sponsorship uh, types, which are manufacturer's brand, private brand, licensing, and co-branding. So let's discuss them uh, turn by turn. First, national or manufacturer brand. Products are sold under the manufacturer's own brand names, which is uh, normally uh, done uh, in most of the markets. and. The second is private or store brand. Uh, this is sponsoring uh, the brand uh, by your own store or distributors brand. Retailers who sellers uh, create their own store brands in order to promote their own brand and sell the product of a supplier, for example. As you can see, Lure Park is the uh, national manufacturer's brand which uh, sells its product through Tesco brand in Tesco uh, stores. So it, it contains the same uh, product inside the container. Licensed brands. Some companies license names or symbols and thereby make them available to other firms. Why do other firms purchase uh, licensed brand names and uh, produce their own product under those uh, well-known brand names just to decrease the marketing promotion expenses and core branding so practice of using the established brand names of two different companies on the same product this kind of strategy can be seen uh, in the laptop production as well for example when you see HP or the other Lenovo Acer laptops, you can uh, notice the sign of the label of Intel uh, processor producer's brand logo uh, on the surface of your laptop. So why do producers use for branding? We know that Lenovo or Acer or HP do very good laptops, but it doesn't mean that they are good at producing high quality processors. So in order to uh, make it visible that their laptop uh, contain the best quality of all attributes they need to use uh, the, in other producers 
brand name logo in order to show that their laptop is the best and contains best parts uh, or best uh, complementary parts uh, that are made by the best producers in the world. Brand development. So you can develop your brand in four uh, ways. Line extension, brand extensions, multi-brands, new brands. Let's discuss them turn by turn. Brand development strategies uh, include four ways. So you can uh, develop your brand in four ways. First, line extension, brand extension, multi-brands, new brands. Line extension is uh, using existing brand name uh, to produce an existing product category. So this is the line extension. The major examples of the line extensions can be seen through this picture. Yeah, as you see, uh, Coca-Cola uh, has created uh, new versions, different versions of its own product category or product line uh, with, with the use of own uh, existing brand name. Line extensions uh, occur when a company extends existing brand names to new forms colors, sizes, ingredients, or flavors in the existing product category. In this slide, you can see uh, one uh, unsuccessful line or brand extension example uh, of Coke. Uh, you can stop and read it in your free time, but we need to move on. Another type of uh, brand development strategy is brand extension. It is using the existing brand name uh, to produce a new category of product. A brand extension extends a current brand name to new or modified products in a new category. For example, Procter & Gamble has leveraged the strengths of its Mr. Clean household clean bring, cleaner brand uh, to launch several new lines and even launched Mr. Clean branded car washes. Uh, brand development strategy, multi-brand type. So, companies often market many different brands in a given product category. For example, in the United States, Pepsi and Co markets at least eight brands of soft drinks. Brand development strategy, new brands. A company might believe that the power of its existing brand name is warning, so a new brand name is needed, or it may create a new brand name when it enters a new product category for which none of its current brand names are appropriate. For example, Toyota created the separate Lexus brand aimed at luxury car customers and the Sion brand targeted toward millennial consumers. In order to uh, identify whether is it understandable or not, here is a given video case. Uh, you can watch it and answer for the following questions. Lead the change. Publicis Zurich presents Swiss International Airlines, the airline of Switzerland. The rise of the discount airlines with ultra low fares puts pressure on many national carriers to offer the same. It's a price war with airlines communicating ever lower fares and bigger discounts, fighting to be the cheapest. But all these savings have a cost. The battle to offer less has led to airlines actually offering less. Airplanes have become generic. For the most part, flying has become ordinary, gray. The change? Air travel has become a commodity with low standards. But Swiss International Airlines refuses to give in. The brand has always been the spokesperson for quality and uniqueness. So to lead the change, the Swiss brand is fighting back as the defender of quality. In Switzerland, high standards are simply expected. The Swiss are known as precise, efficient, focused on detail, discreet, friendly, and passionate about quality. Being the defender of quality is part of the national DNA. So to stand out, we simply had to own what our country is famous for. And we did so with a promise. 
Our sign is a promise. Signs, you find them everywhere. Signs don't need words. People all over the world understand them. Time doesn't affect them. The message remains the same. A sign can symbolize power, luck, cleverness, love, or just give instructions. A sign can stand for quality and friendliness, our sign. It says more than where we come from. It stands for a commitment to doing things the right way, for caring that little bit more. It is a sign we carry with a certain pride, because it is more than just a sign. Our sign is a promise. The campaign portrays a modern Swiss aesthetic and talks directly about our Swiss values. Our service standards are high. Where we come from, it's pretty much expected. When it comes to quality, even we lose our neutrality. The only airline that hates being late more than you do. Swiss chocolate on every flight? Don't you just love cliches? The platform is ideal for integrated executions that demonstrate how we defend quality. The results. The campaign runs globally, reaching more than a billion people around the world and has fantastic results. Strongest social media brand in the country. Swissness and quality conscious are the number one takeouts. Highest ever passenger volume, seat load factor and revenue. Moved from eighth to fifth best quality airline worldwide. The only European airline in the top 10. And more. Perhaps the greatest sign of success? Swiss is one of only two European airlines to grow and make a profit. Swiss is the defender of quality. And their sign is a promise. So you finished watching the video, please answer these following questions. By now our lecture is over, thank you for your attention, take care, wash your hands and stay home.